So Brock, question for you. An absolute beginner is here. They're watching. They're in this course to learn about Bitcoin and crypto. I just wanna ask you the most basic, cause you are one of the geniuses of the whole industry. Maybe, you know, the most respected person in this space. So I wanna take it down a level to people go, I buy into, I hear what you're saying, Brock. This is the future. I wanna, I, I'm making 50 grand a year. I have a job. I wanna dabble in this. First question. If you were an absolute beginner or advising an absolute, just pretend I was an absolute beginner, knew not one thing. And I say, I wanna start, I know enough that I know that I'm interested in blockchain, like you said, learn about it. And I wanna invest a little bit of money into it. What wallet do you recommend? Is there, do you, everybody's using Coinbase. People say Jax is great. Do you have, I don't want you to have to play favorites. Can you name a couple yeah, that you would recommend? Yeah, no okay. problem, I do this all the time because I mean, I, I get asked this question daily. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so um, it depends on where you are. You know, what let's country, take the U.S. first. What, in what country you live. But let's, yeah, let's start with the U.S. Coinbase is an option. Uh, uh, they're a, a, a good service. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, people have, you know, found customer service issues to be the case, but that's really true of everyone. When you've had an industry that's growing at this rapid, rapid right. pace, it's hard to scale, and especially when you're dealing with this kind of money. Yes. You know, you can't just like say, let's add 200 new people, and like, you know, it's, right. it's just, it's, this is, you know, there's no room for error. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I tell people that get a little frustrated with any of these companies, it's called be patient. You know, you're in a, a, a boom like this. So, you know, Coinbase is great, uh, Gemini is great, Kraken is great, it's kind of like US exchanges. Um, uh, Have you heard of Jax? Somebody recommended Jax isn't uh, uh, an exchange, so that's where you can uh, procure tokens. Yeah, I'm talking about. So let's start with then, procuring tokens. Yeah, so that you, you you normally go to one of the exchanges. Yep. There's also you know other uh, uh, channels. Sometimes there's Bitcoin ATMs in your city if you just want to do something very small. The fees are high, but if you just want to get started with 100 bucks, it's an interesting experience or just to check out. Yeah. And they're in most cities now. Um, so the wallet you would recommend opening up first is. So Coinbase. Well, well this is a, for, those yeah. are the exchanges. Yep. Yep. Don't think of them as wallets so much. These are places where you can buy your coins. Yep. You can store your coins there. Yeah, Coinbase is more yep. that. But a lot of times, what you do is you use them as the on ramps and the off ramps. Think of them as you're getting onto the, you know, the new super highway. Yes. You know, you have to go from the old world into the new. Yep. And the exchanges are the path where you can go from a dollar to a, you know, a cryptocurrency. Yes. And so the first place is where you're going to get it. But now, once you have it, you normally want to take it out of exchanges because you're not trying to leave your money in a bank don't do that right away mm -hmm. make sure you know what you're doing leaving your money in coinbase until you feel you're you're comfortable to move off it is a good thing yeah you know get comfortable there's a lot i feel like most yeah. people use coinbase not only for the exchange but for the wallet yeah and, they, and they're yeah. one of the betters if you want to do that and that's what i recommend uh, what beginners do yes uh because they're the biggest they've got the biggest balance sheet they've been doing it the longest yes you know they've got in you know insurance and things so i mean you're you're if you're going to leave your money in one of the exchanges right. that's you're somewhat the best. safe there it, 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 you know, it's the lesser of you know, yeah. your, your, your evils. Um, but ultimately, what you want to get to a proficiency that you can take your money out into your own wallet. I generally recommend a hardware wallet right now, which would be Trezor or the Ledger uh, okay. Nano. Uh, and that is to take your private keys offline. Make sure you get two okay. so that you can have a backup, put it in a safe. And if you end up with a ton of money, make so sure you have So these are three. physical, just yeah. to be clear. So these are your, your upgrading to have your offline wallets. And then when you want to trade, Mm -hmm. Or move things around and send stuff. You're also going to have your online wallet. You know, yes. you're kind of your your more. So let's talk wallet. about the, the the hard physical wallet. Can you repeat just yeah, the Trezor ones? Trezor and mm -hmm. Ledger and Anos. Okay. Those are the two companies. They're both fantastic. So and that's the only so two if, that you let's take consider. Bob, let's take Bob hypothetical. Bob or Susie buys on the exchange Coinbase. They want to take it off Coinbase. What's the process? You take the physical. Yeah, you're going to withdraw it to that wallet on that. Key. It's basically all. All it is is it's a piece of hardware uh -huh. that stores your private key. That's got a wallet associated with it or wallets associated with it, and so you're just storing the private key offline. Yes. So it's nowhere on the internet. That's the safest way from a security perspective. And where do you put it? A bank well, deposit, a safe in your house. It depends on how much money you're talking about, right? Let's and say so, it's a thousand dollars for somebody. Yeah, you can probably have just one backup. Okay. You know, and then have that in the safe in your house. And why do you, when you say two? So you want one that is the one that you use. Yes. And you want to have a second one as a backup in case you lose it. Would you do something. two with the same? Yeah, I, one is a, one is a backup. You just have redundancy. You know, in a world where you're you know taking control of your own money. Yes. It's uh, important that you you know are taking responsibility. Yes. Yeah, that's like having a bar of gold in your house, except for a bar of gold that you know is digital and you can 
lose it if you screw up, you know, so make sure that, you know, because who knows what can happen. Lots of things can happen in life, right? What if somebody has a million? Then, then what do you do? Then you probably want to have a third backup and just have one in another place in case that place gets burned down or, you know. So maybe one at a bank and it. one at your yeah, house. Yeah, I mean, when you start dealing with big money, that's the right type of redundancy for whatever your main wallets would be. And then you have your kind of hot wallets, the online stuff that you use when you want to tr transact. Yeah, with. so let's talk about the hot wallet. What do you, re what do you and recommend? And so it, it depends on, again, what tokens you're using, what coins. Let's say Bitcoin, Ether, you know, like Bitcoin Cad, they're using the kind of the bigger ones. Yeah, so uh, uh, for like your Bitcoin stuff, uh, you know, there's been Bread Wallet and there's been uh, Airbits and you've had a, you know, a number of kind of wallets that have come out over time. Uh, that are all uh, uh, kind of okay with the hot wallets. You shouldn't be lose, you're leaving large amounts of money in those. Those would become kind of like your mobile wallets. Then for your web wallets, um, uh, and Jax, uh, for your all your other coins, actually you might be better off just using Jax. Yeah. Uh, for even, uh, I mean, for as much as you can for your mobile wallet. Um, and then for your web wallet, yeah, you can and use. And can you differentiate for people listening, mobile wallet versus web wallet? Yeah, I mean, well, some things are better designed for mobile. Some things are your phone. So your phone is less secure than your computer, and these types of things, or your computer is less secure depending upon what they're doing, how they've developed it. You know, security is, you know, kind of, you know, one of the main things that is everyone needs to be mindful in this area, and yeah. that's why you don't leave large amounts of money in devices and wallets and things that could be accessed if someone stole your identity or someone yes. got your hardware, and so you. That's why you leave the large sums offline. So and the large you, sums offline, and then you're putting. Do you transfer the large sums then, and you're putting them in? Yeah, it's, your imagine you you have your own vault, yep. and so okay, I only need you know ten thousand dollars right now, or fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff for two uh, five hundred dollars worth, mm -hmm. and then the rest you know it's whatever it is that your needs are, um, and then you know some of the other web wallets, uh, Ether Wallet, Exodus. There's a few. Um, you uh, think Jacks can bit, work bit, for, bit, both? for Bitcoin uh, if you have large amounts of money? BitGo. Mm -hmm. uh, BitGo it, for large amounts of money is um, absolutely what I'd use for a, a web wallet. And with that, you can even, I think, forego some of uh, uh, that redundancy. I mean, the, the BitGo wallet's pretty pretty phenomenal, too. Yeah. And there's other stuff out there. I, I'm sure I didn't include everyone. And to anyone I didn't mention, I'm sorry. It's not that I don't love you. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I love everyone in this business that's working, you know, from a place of good intention. You yeah. know, someone that's here to try and make good things happen. And, you know, good people do make mistakes. Yep. You know, and uh, uh, and understand when you make mistakes, it's really costly for people. So do your best work.